Yo, stats, let's discuss the internet in 2016 and where it should be in, say, 10 years. So I think the single biggest issue with the internet today is how fragmented it is. Um, you know, the way we experience it is we have like you know, an account on Facebook, an account on Reddit, uh, a Gmail, Google accounts, like all these separate accounts. I mean, even if you want to just upload like a photo, like what do you do? Do you upload it to Instagram? Do you upload it to uh, Facebook? Do you upload it to Snapchat? Or any of the thousands of other apps? Like it's, it's so fragmented. And when you want to message someone, do you email them, do you text them, do you uh, message them through Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or Telegram or WeChat or like, fuck, or Snapchat? And this is why our phones are just like terrible, terrible, really shitty UIs. I mean, they're just like a screen with a bunch of little app icons. That's pretty much as good as it gets. And the other thing is like all these apps are pretty much exactly the same. They're just the exact same type of data. So they're either like a message or a photo or some type of content displayed in the feed with a few extra little features. So it makes sense why we're in this reality because we, you know, in a capitalist world and obviously you want to own the data and control it and you want your own brand and your own app and your own icon and you want to get the most users possible to make money. And as more computing paradigms come online like uh, VR and AR and chatbots and AI and stuff like that, uh, these companies are definitely still going to go along that mindset, that corporate mindset of owning everything. So Facebook wants to be the single messaging app that everyone uses. Uh, Facebook wants to own the VR platform. Um, okay, so that's, that's one direction, but I see another direction that could be much better. Ever since I first heard about the blockchain and Ethereum, um, my first thought was that the best way to use this is to kind of treat it as a back-end developer platform uh, for other industries to plug into. So that if you want to want launch a new social network or a new photo sharing app or like an escrow app or a uh, replacing insurance industry or recruiting industry, you create a smart contract and that's your focus. The thing is that same mentality is kind of already seeping through to the Ethereum world. So I just saw um, a new social networking startup called Akasha. So decentralized back-end, but they've, they're not focused on the back-end, they're focused on the front-end. What they should be doing is building the ultimate decentralized backend for any type of social network so that uh, other people can come along and plug into that same backend and everyone shares this same decentralized uniform data. Or well, say you want to replace the insurance industry, cool. Don't go start a, a startup with your, on your own service with your own brand and all that stuff. And don't go start an Ethereum contract that only you use. Make one that anyone can use to once that way of thinking starts uh, you know, snowballing, um, the paradigm completely changes because rather than launching a startup and doing it on your own servers, your first instinct will be, okay, I'll use one of these back-end decentralized platforms. And even though there's no incentive for them, it'd be awesome if like groups like Snapchat and Google and Facebook plugged into these decentralized backends or actually helped build those decentralized backends to scale their services globally. And in that way, the end user is still using these front-end apps that they're familiar with, but all of their data is stored in a decentralized blob backend uh, where they have control over it and it's all uniform. Okay, so once that's in place, now we can create the single interface to everything. So imagine you open up your phone, and rather than seeing all app icons, it's like a perfect UI just for you, personalized. So your entire screen at any given point is very contextualized based on your location, based on your interests, based on what you need next. Think, think like Google Now, but like the ultimate version of Google Now. This is kind of one of the promises of the one of the end goals of the chatbot kind of revolution that's happening now, where you can have all these apps combined into one single messaging interface. Like Viv has done that in a really complicated way. So, uh, so what Viv has done is they've uh, made this incredibly complex system in order to tie together all these individual segregated data silos to make a uniform personal assistant that is super complicated. The way I'd like to see the internet work in the near future is that everyone on the entire planet operates off this decentralized backend, probably like Ethereum. All their data is on there and everything's just run by smart contracts. So you have that layer and everything runs on top of that and everyone's building these like back-end developer platforms for everyone to plug into. And then the thing I think want to see on, on top of that is a whole bunch of AI agents in chatbot. And then on top of that, you have your personal AI assistant that knows you better than you know yourself and anyone knows you. And then you have you. And so your personal assistant is the interface to that whole back-end. The entire stack literally becomes like a global brain because every single AI agent that runs on that system can talk to each other because the data forms, the data is uniform. You can just like plug and play everywhere. So now imagine it's the early 2020s and we're all wearing augmented reality displays that look like normal glasses, like Ray-Bans, but it's a data overlay in the entire world. And we might have wearables and all sorts of crazy stuff. In that world, each of our realities are completely different. Like, I might see plants differently. I might have the, uh, the beach plug-in that turns the beach blue. You might have it purple. Different realities entirely. We're all constantly recording video and audio and, and uploading it to this decentralized backend. Um, and it's being processed through machine learning. And from that data, our personal AI is constantly monitoring. Your personal AI will, will want to like know what you want before you actually know you need it. So it's ready and, and ready to go directly when you need it. Or you can just request information or data from that AI. And what that AI is actually doing is it, it just puts out a pulse into this decentralized backend, talking to all the other AI agents out there, the billions and billions that sit on top of that data stack, that decentralized data. 
So every data request, uh, everything from like, say, show me photos of what my friends did in the weekend to like, I need to book a holiday or I need a dentist appointment, like everything completely decentralized run by your AI. And what this means is a pre-merge, pre-singularity, like pre, you know, we don't need implants, we don't need our neurons wrapped at this point, but we can actually build a global AI, the global hive mind AI. Because your personal AI that's plugged into whatever device you're using at the time uh, is almost like a neuron that sends out a little pulse throughout the entire decentralized backend, which hits a bunch of other AIs and it passes that through. If we can get everyone across that system, that is how Ethereum becomes the AI. You can almost think of Ethereum as the evolution of consciousness of the internet. We built the system, we built the body, Ethereum is the consciousness.